Welcome to part two of our risk analysis. Let's pick up where we left off. In excessive wrist obliquity, we will see that there are trapezio trapezoidal and the trapezio capitate joint spaces are closed. You can see that the um, trapezium and the trapezoid are uh, overlapping as well as the capitate and the trapezoid. Also, the uh, trapezium will superimpose a small part of the trapezoid. Half or more of the trapezoid superimposes the capitate. And the third through third or fourth through fifth metacarpal mid shafts are superimposed demonstrating that the wrist is in excessive obliquity. So let's take a look at our PA wrist oblique practice analysis. We can see that our trapezio trapezoidal joint here is closed your uh, trapezio capitate joint over here is closed. Um, the trapezium is superimposing a small part uh, here of the trapezoid. The fourth through fifth metacarpal shafts are superimposed and this should automatically uh, bring to your mind that we're in excessive obliquity. Uh, the wrist is rotated more than that 45 degrees that we need. Also the posterior radial margin superimposes more than one-fourth of the lunate. Um, this should let you know that the proximal forearm may have been elevated a little bit. It's not parallel with the IR, like it should. Everything should be parallel. And the ulnar styloid is not in profile. So we have excessive obliquity with a little bit of elevation from the proximal forearm. In order to correct this imaging error, we need to decrease that medial wrist obliquity to that 45 degrees. Make sure that that proximal forearm is parallel with the IR and that the position to position the humeral epicondyles perpendicular to the IR. So in our second practice analysis, you can see that the metacarpals, again, are once um, superimposing each other. Um, also, looking at your uh, trapezium, the relationship of the trapezium and trapezoid, their joint spaces are closed. The, we hardly even see the um, trapezoid and the capitate relationship. So again, everything is in an external rotation. We are at more than 45 degrees in our obliquity. Also, the posterior radial margin is um, superimposing more than one-fourth of that lunate. So down here you can see it's superimposing uh, more than one-fourth of the lunate. That means that, again, that wrist is, or that proximal forearm is elevated. We need to uh, decrease the hand flexion. Um, we need to also depress that proximal forearm and we want to decrease that that amount of uh, external rotation so that the wrist is in that 45 degree um, obliquity that we need. So let's move on to the lateral wrist projection. Radi 
a graphic image analysis guideline state for the lateral wrist that the ulna, ulnar styloid should be demonstrated in profile posteriorly. The ulnar styloid is demonstrated distal to the midline of the ulnar head. Anterior aspects of this distal scaphoid and pisiform should be aligned. The distal radius and ulna are superimposed. Distal aspects of the distal scaphoid and pisiform are aligned. The second through fifth metacarpals are placed at a 10 to 15 degree angle with the anterior plane of the wrist. The trapezium is demonstrated without superimposition of the first proximal metacarpal. The first metacarpal is demonstrated without foreshortening. The carpal bones are demonstrated at the center of the exposure field. And the carpal bones, one fourth of the distal ulna radius and half of the proximal metacarpals are included within the exposure field. I have included those image analysis guidelines in this presentation. In order to determine whether you have a true lateral uh, projection of the wrist, you should take a look at the relationship between the pisiform and the distal aspect of the scaphoid. On a good lateral projection, the anterior and the proximal cortical margins of these two carpals are aligned as demonstrated. If the anterior aspect of the distal scaphoid is positioned posterior to the anterior aspect of the pisiform on a lateral wrist projection, the wrist is in external rotation. If the anterior aspect of the distal scaphoid is positioned anterior to the anterior aspect of the pisiform on a lateral wrist projection, the wrist will be demonstrated in an internally rotated position. So let's talk about um, lateral wrist flexion and extension. The goal here is to attain an image within that 10 to 15 degree uh, flexion um, angulation. When you are in um, excessive flexion where we are, the metacarpals are at a, a degree greater than 15 degrees, you will see that the wrist is, uh, the hand is flexed out as in the 20 degree uh, projection as we see right here. When the hand is in <clears throat> extension, where the metacarpals are at less than 10 degrees, uh, you can see we're closing joint spaces over here, um, and uh, we are not in that true lateral projection. So we're looking for, again, that 10 to 15 degree uh, uh, extension of that, or flexion of that uh, wrist and hand. Lastly, let's talk about the importance of the thumb depression and its relationship with the trapezium. If the first metacarpal isn't depressed, uh, then it is foreshortened and its pros proximal aspect will superimpose over the trapezium here. So we can't see the trapezium as well as if the thumb was depressed. Therefore, it is important to maintain every uh, aspect of positioning to obtain a true lateral projection. 
So let's take a look at a first practices analysis of the lateral wrist projection. At first glance, we can tell that this wrist is not lateral. We are in an oblique projection, probably more than 45 degree oblique. Uh, the anterior aspect of the distal scaphoid is anterior to the anterior aspect of the pisiform. Uh, this means that we are not sufficiently rotated. Um, the wrist was actually internally rotated. We want to externally rotate that wrist until the wrist is in that true lateral projection. Looking at this wrist projection, um, you, it does look like it is in a true lateral projection. However, when we take a closer look, you can see that the distal aspect of the scaphoid is distal to the pisiform here, okay? This means that the wrist was in ulnar deviation. That's why this uh, radial uh, or the radial um, and, and metacarpal articulation is demonstrated as closed as well. So we need to place that wrist in a neutral position by elevating the proximal forearm until the long axis of the third metacarpal and mid forearm are aligned parallel with the IR. So again, looking at this lateral wrist projection, we can tell that a lot of the elements uh, meet evaluation criteria. Uh, this wrist looks like it's in a true lateral projection. The articulation here is demonstrated, um, you know, superimposed. The carpals are superimposed. Uh, also, uh, the scaphoid and pisiform are in alignment. However, when you look at the trapezium here, we have an issue. The thumb is not uh, is superimposing over the trapezium, and it should be in profile. This lets me know that the thumb was not depressed and placed parallel with the IR. In order to correct this positioning, depress the thumb um, and repeat the image because the trapezium should be demonstrated in uh, profile. Look at our last lateral wrist projection. The image looks again lateral. However, uh, the thumb again is in uh, appropriate positioning. But when you look at the relationship between the scaphoid and the pisiform, the pisiform is demonstrated anterior to the scaphoid back here. That's letting me know that the wrist was in external rotation. In order to correct this imaging error, we need to internally rotate the wrist until the wrist is in a true lateral projection. 